Kwa tabua, ya usi sambe bure kanroka. Azo robo kwa tabua, anto tele taka na baro kwa na pula ifeo. Namba dua ena sir. Mula, naga go limo, anto tele taka na ifeo, na ba wangu sa sieta tuwa na pula ifeo. Mula, au chusem po nivalu, wangu nini kandabu, na imo kisa, au kwa chup chiku ina sinu, anto tele taka valyo kwa na baro kwa na pula ifeo, na bantua ena sir. Oh, lori ma, naga gini suka lampasa. Todo o Teletaca na Bula FM, na Bandua da Serra. Bula FM. Good evening, this is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. In this bulletin, RFMF assures PG there is no cause for alarm over arms shipment. Land Transport Authority to outsource vehicle inspection services. And Health Ministry to recruit retiring medical staff to sustain services. People need not panic over the consignment of small arms and other military equipment which have arrived at the Queen Elizabeth Barracks in Nambua, Suva. RFMF Acting Commander Rear Admiral William Enopoto says the shipment is nothing out of the ordinary. Razana Nisha has more. Small arms supporting weapons in these two military trucks arrived from Russia yesterday and immediately there was misinformation about the consignment. I hear that uh, there are a lot of uh, rumors spread in the, in the social media and I, I, I ask those that are spreading those lies, really, rumors, not to, uh, not to cause, cause uh, unnecessary panic and worry. Uh, our population and as I said this is nothing new this is a way we modernize this is what we do all the time every now and then you need to to replace your weapon system and that is what we are uh, we're doing Rear Admiral Nopoto says the weapons have been brought in to assist hundreds of military officers who are sent on peacekeeping duties it, it has uh, small arms um, and and uh, it is very much needed in our peacekeeping. This is the, the assistance to our peacekeeping missions. We, we really need to change our weapons um, in Sinai especially. They're still using the weapons uh, that they used you know, when the mission started. Uh, and, and we need to equip them properly. The, the situation in our peacekeeping areas is totally different now. The acting commander told FBC News that the shipment was donated by Russia and also includes advanced training equipment. Plus uh, two trucks uh, that uh, carry a mobile workshop. Uh, uh, they're very good trucks uh, that can be used also uh, during uh, uh, humanitarian assistance and disaster relief uh, operations. Yeah? They've got quite big tires and they can drive uh, through uh, this flooding. Uh, so it'll be, it's very handy and we're lucky to have uh, those uh, two uh, trucks. Uh, and we also have uh, simulators uh, where you, instead of going out to the firing range, you can just use the simulator uh, uh, to practice. The RFMF confirms it has followed all customs regulations and has received clearance for the consignment. There will be an official ceremony next month where Russian military officers will formally hand over the weapons and other equipment to the RFMF. A team from Russia will also train Fijian soldiers on the use of the weapons. Razana Nisha, FBC News. More than 20 companies will be licensed to inspect vehicles this year. Land Transport Authority Chief Executive Naisa Twinadeva says they're bringing on more garages and motor vehicle dealers by April. Kelly Vadala reports. Hillen Transport Authority will outsource the inspection of private vehicles and light goods vehicles to offer more efficient services. Chief Executive Naisa Twinadeva says the officers around Fiji won't inspect these two classes of vehicles for months from now. We have decided that we are going to um, maintain the, um, uh, the heavy commercial and EPSV at the moment, but to start off with uh, this outsourcing program, uh, all the private vehicles plus the um, uh, light commercial vehicles, they will be, by mid this year, will be inspected by various um, uh, outsourcing agencies 
that will be appointed by the uh, uh, Land Transport Authority. The 20 companies will have to meet LTA requirements before being licensed for vehicle inspection. They will be chosen from strategic locations around Fiji. After the inspection, vehicle owners still have to get their warranty of fitness and registration from the LTA. Yeah, the success is good before the before it's too crowded there. It's a very good idea, I think, rather than taking it to the LTA, so we can go other places for the inspection. There are currently three companies licensed for vehicle inspection, two in Suva and one in Nandi. Sabuera Tambua, FBC News. Welcome back to FBC News. Now we apologize for that minor setback, but we continue. And now more people in the Northern Division are being given the micro and small business grants by the government. As mentioned in Tenganga, the Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama handed out 245 grants to individuals to further expand their businesses. Eleanor Turanga, view once again. Small and micro entrepreneurs receiving their grants from the Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama in Tenganga yesterday. Uh, you know, village life is very hard eh, to earn money uh, to start. Uh, some small business but we're very happy that uh, we received this grant uh, from our government and uh, i think it's a great impact on us to make uh, my my i'm gonna plant uh, to grow more make my family uh, feel good feel better Banimarama urged them to be responsible with the grant government has invested in them you have been selected on the basis of merit your business plans have been carefully assessed and we have placed our faith in each one of you to seize this opportunity and run with it. Please don't spoil it, don't squander it and don't waste it. You have the ability and the talent to become the next generation of business leaders for your communities and for Fiji. Including the number of recipients here in Senganga, the total number of people assisted so far under the scheme is now 4,945. And the total amount of money now handed out comes to $5 million. These grants are special to me because they have a larger impact that extends beyond our entrepreneurs. It also benefits their families, their husbands, their wives and children who can enjoy better lives and more secure futures. That is the true value in giving our small businesses this boost. This week alone, government has handed out the micro and small business grants to over 700 individuals who intend to grow their businesses for the betterment of their livelihoods. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. The Northern Division has not been left out of the drought currently affecting the country. And the Prime Minister, Varenge Baini Marama, has told civil servants in the Northern Division to be proactive as it will continue to be like this in the next few months. Eleanor Tarangevu with this report from Savu Savu. Mbani Marama told the civil servants in a Talano session that they should be ready to assist in the case of water shortages. To hire vehicles, eh? to transport uh, water around the country. All we need is, uh, I think there was a tender out for trucks, water carrying trucks in the last couple of weeks. I don't know if uh, there were any additional uh, vehicles that came on board with the tender process, but I think that's something that we need to concentrate on, on the water shortage in the Northern Division. The Prime Minister also noted the need to identify other water sources. There will be a lot of uh, demands for mineral resources, so Kimdo Mala, Mundo Tim. Uh, for boreholes, uh, testing of uh, uh, areas where we can get uh, boreholes in. And that's something that uh, we found out in the last couple of days. The head of government also urged the civil servants to inform people in the rural areas of the different kinds of government assistance that is available to them. Assist us this year. Please go through the budget address. Not only for this year, <clears throat> for the last two years, if possible. Go through the budget address for the last two years and uh, go through your individual ministry's address. Uh, because I fear there's a lot of people in the <coughs> areas that don't seem to understand what's available to them. 
the Prime Minister also directed heads of departments in government ministries to look after the welfare of its workers. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. The people of Vaturova in the province of Vakandrova in Vanwalevu have traditionally sought for forgiveness from the Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama for not supporting his government since 2006. During his trip to Bunisalusalu Primary School to open a new classroom block yesterday, Atambua was presented to the Prime Minister seeking his forgiveness for not backing him and not voting for him in the 2014 general elections. The people acknowledge that despite this, government continues to assist the village. And Bani Marama received the Tambua and accepted their apology. Still to come, all fired up for school. The 2016 school year is just four days away. Andy, and I love Mirchi FM. Hi, my name is Sonny from Canberra. I love listening to Mirchi FM online. I am Urmila Devi, I am Tawwa, I am Shandil and Ashnil. I'm Shelly in Tanga Nausori. Mirchi music simply windas in Nausori. Meshfak, Balibusin, Mirchi FM, Mere Nasna. Extending contracts of retiring medical staff is one option the Ministry of Health will rely on to relieve constraints on resources. Minister Chone Usamate says. Working with existing resources is critical to ensuring the better performance in 2016. Maggie Boyle tells us more. It's no secret that the health sector is resource challenged and this was a point stressed to the heads of departments by the minister responsible. What are the lead indicators that you need to manage week by week, <coughs> month by month, that you must get commitments from your staff, that you must manage the performance on? The lead indicators will allow us to get to the lag indicators. That's very important. Chane Usamate says he's relying on various department managers Welcome to think to outside morning. the box when it comes to resource constraints. We still have issues with being able to find people to fill all the positions. So some of those, uh, some of those uh, requirements we meet internally. Some of them we might just have to hold back on uh, people that normally retire, keep some of them back to fill some of the positions and I will expect the staff to come up with other innovative ways of filling the requirements that we have. $280 million has been allocated for the health ministry this year. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. With just four more days left for school to begin, parents are busy preparing their children for the academic year. For some, it will be a momentous occasion sending their young ones off to school for the very first time. Kelly Vadala has the details. Six-year-old Lavinia Lesuma can't wait to start school, so much so that she's already got all her books sorted and bag packed. What class are you going to be in, Lavinia? Class one. Class one. Are you excited to go to school? Yes, I'm really excited. Lavinia's mother, Lua, is also looking forward to her little girl walking into the classroom come Tuesday morning. But she hasn't forgotten her responsibilities. Safety is paramount even though Colombo Fijian School is within walking distance from their home. we been sending her to school since it's her first year for her to attend school. School staffs, she's been begging me all along to buy her school staffs early and she'll be going along the road to school. I've been advi advising her to take care. Asupampali Mai Hawaii is getting her two daughters ready for school. Not only packing their bags and sorting their uniforms, but ensuring they can look after themselves. It will be a very special moment for me as a parent to see my two daughters going to school for the first time. I've been advising them for the road safety rules and since we here, uh, we're staying here in Kalambo, we are near the river, I've been advising them to keep a distance from the river. Chief of Operations ACP Rusia Titunravu says they will have special operations when schools open. But, uh, we are ready now again for the beginning of the school term. So as we round down our operation in Ngaunani Marau, we are there again, uh, ready for the opening of uh, the school um, first, uh, first, um, first term. And uh, you'll be expecting uh, our patrol officers uh, on uh, uh, traffic control and also on school patrols. The school year begins from Tuesday and government agencies are calling on everyone to ensure that it goes off without a hitch. Kelly Vadala, FBC News.
Destruction of sugarcane, vegetables and root crops in Yangara Tabua is costing the government and the Yangara pastoral. This was revealed by the Attorney General Ayan Sayed Kayum while compensating farmers whose produce has been destroyed by cattle. Madhim Boletamana files this report. These sugarcane farmers who live on the outskirts of the Yangara Pastoral Company Limited have suffered from cattle crossing into their boundaries and grazing on their farms. The compensation ranges from $100 to $11,700. Uh, this is the range of the compensation that has been assessed. Uh, it's been uh, tagged at the price of the cane as was available. The compensation comes following a thorough investigation on the losses incurred by the farmers. The Fiji Sugar Corporation and the Ministry for Public Enterprises carried out the assessment. If you know that somebody's cutting down a fence, and we have known that there are people who actually cut down fence, some people cut down fence to take the timber away, some people take the, cut down the fence to take the choro the barbed wire away, it does happen. Uh, at the same time, if that notification is given to Yangara Pastor, they can adequately address that and immediately. So we don't have a situation again where we're all sitting here and trying to get compensation or you uh, are out of pocket. For the 109 farmers in Yangara, the three-year wait for compensation has been worth it. But there are still concerns of the same type of damage occurring in the future. Thieves, eh? they also cut the fence and that's also a big problem. Oh, they are stealing the cattle and so that we can't help it. Eh? But there are people from the government side also, the police people, they are also looking into it. Sayed Kayum urged farmers to assist the Yangara pastoral by repairing broken fences which do little to stop cattle from crossing over. Madhim Tamana, FBC News. A 38-year-old father of three is pleading for help to find his wife who has been missing since yesterday morning. Ruben Chandra from Dalia Nabua claims his 28-year-old wife Rosina Devi left home for Colonial War Memorial Hospital at around 7 a.m. yesterday and has failed to return home. Devi is tall and slim and has long black hair. She left the home at about 10 to 7 and after that at uh, 25 percent she gave me the call. She was crying and she was telling me that uh, she's in one of the taxi and she doesn't know why the taxi driver isn't taking to her. When I asked her what is the taxi number, she says I don't know what is the taxi number. And she has also told me that uh, taxi driver has been threatening her to, you know, just they're going to kill her. So I just asked her, just give me the location, where are you? You are somewhere in Suba or somewhere in Navwa. But by the time, while the conversation was going on, the phone just get switched off. Police spokesperson Anna Naisora has confirmed that a report has been lodged at the Navua police station. Sports is up next. Here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Amrita, and good evening. Coming up in sports tonight... Bailey's Coral Coast 7 semi finalists decided. And results won't matter for Fijian Olympians on Spain tour. Stay with us for this and more. Bula, I'm Duri from Nasinu Market. My choice is simple Gold FM. Only the classic hits. My name is Yvonne. I'm from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fayandra, my name is Sunny. Only the Gold FM at Golden Point Resort, Rocky Rocky. Hi, I'm Anna of Nasinu. When it comes to a radio, my choice is always Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Anna and I'm from uh, Nandy. I love listening to Gold FM, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Defending champions of the Bailey's Coral Coast Sevens, police are two games away from retaining its title. This as the side beat first landing 21-12 in the cup quarterfinals in Singatoka today. Here's some of the action. No pressure zone to scoring points, but it'll be the police. Kuri Saru opens it up for police. BLK launching gear by the fleet pass of good Connie Bell and now looking for a runner and finding it going through is Nawanga has been so strong for police all weekend and the captain great bit of play from the back of the ruck they are the wraparound is fantastic and the try saving effort there from Bill K's number 11 Lovo, has he done enough to prevent? He has oh, just a oh. great look actually from the assistant ref. 
You know, while police will meet Setofano the Cows Tambandamu in the first cup semi final tomorrow, Tambandamu beat Ulina Cow Babas 14 5 in their quarterfinal clash today. Here are the tries. Able to steal the ball though, and now kicking forward, and the race is on. And that is number eight for Tamandamu. That is Samu Bale. Successful, and now another foot race nudged forward, and the chase is on. And who will win? It's Lute Jr. Lutu Jr. <laughs> and the consultation now was. Oh, it's the try is a the really the the try finder has been the kick today. But that one doesn't work. And Lutu Jr. Oh, he steps twice and comes through the defense like a knife through butter. Noel in the other quarterfinals, Ratu Felice beat Aussie Thunderbolts 26-24 and Wardens beat Westfield 24-21. We now join Rohit Deo live from Lawanga Park. Rohit, police looks on track to defend its title. Good evening, Jamie. Yes, the police rugby side cruised to their pool stages and had a good win in the cup quarterfinal against a classy BLK first landing side. Of course, the BLK first landing side featured national sevens rep Isake Kato Nimbao and Nemosi Moleboro, but unfortunately, they've bowed out from the cup competition. Police faced Tambandamu in the semi finals, and this may be their toughest match of the tournament. Tambandamu, which featured David Batiratu, Setofano Zakao, and Leo Nikasau, they defeated Ulnikau in their cup quarterfinal. The Coastal Ratu Felice side, they are the surprise package of the tournament. They and the Aussie Thunderbolts in their cup quarter final. Of course, the winner coming with the last kick of the match. The Ratu Felice side featured basically all unknown players and are sure to give the Warden side a good run for their money in the semi finals. The Warden side, they had a close win against the Westfield Dragons in their cup quarter final, but are still yet to lose a match in the competition. In the women's competition, all overseas teams look good uh, today, with both the Fijiana team also making it to the cup quarter finals. So it's the final day tomorrow, and in the next 24 hours, two teams will be $20,000 richer. Jamie. Meanwhile, Vodafone Fiji Sevens coach Ben Ryan was at Lawanga Park to keep an eye on players in his extended squad as well as scout for new talent. Ryan released six players from his squad to participate in the three-day tournament. Now it's all about going through the processes like all the other boys have gone in the national squad. You know, they get seen, they get training, they maybe don't get picked the first time, they keep working, they get selected, they, they go, you know, bit part in the first tournaments and then they slowly find their feet and they get into the squad so you know it's hard work um, but I just want to try to remind a few of the players that there's still open door policy. Ryan adds he has identified at least four players who have impressed him enough to warrant a call up to the national extended squad next week. While all the focus is on the Coral Coast Sevens, preparations are being made for the Fiji Better Mara Sevens in April. Organizers believe it will be the most important competition in its history with the World 7 Series and Rio Olympic Games looming ahead, Salin Dadakadaka reports. On full of the 40th Fiji Beta Mari 7s promises to be the biggest ever for players and fans alike. The tournament has been shifted to April in time for the first term school holidays. Uh, it is only this slot that we've been given. Uh, as you all know, our events are sanctioned, sanctioned by the Fiji Rugby Union uh, and it's going to be played over two days and we're going to still keep the same format. Uh, 64 men's team uh, and 8 women's teams and 6 oldies. There are plans to introduce a secondary schools category in the tournament, but the focus is on generating support for our men and women's seven sides to the Rio Olympic Games. It also is going to be a fundraising event as well uh, to support the Road to Goal uh, that this uh, voluntary uh, group of people have come forward to do volunteer. And the, and the Maris Rugby Club will be contributing, hopefully everybody will contribute at that event uh, towards our athletes, the men's and women's rugby team, as we uh, move on to, uh, to Rio this year. Once again, teams are being reminded to submit their registration forms as soon as possible to avoid disappointment. Silent or the Kadaka, FBC Sports. And that's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. Another milestone has been achieved in the Nandi Airport Terminal Modernization Project with the opening of the brand new rental car area at Nandi International Arrivals today. Executive Chair Fais Khan says extensive works are still being carried out as the project moves towards completion later this year. 
Avis budget euro cars, blue car rentals, I apologies, Bula car rentals, Hertz rentals, satellite rentals and Carpenters rentals have started operating from the brand new rental car booths from today. Showers affected most parts of the country today. A trough with associated cloud and showers remain slow moving over Fiji. Taking a look at the temperatures, warm temperatures prevailed over most of the group, 32 degrees, the highest of the day in three centres. Tomorrow, afternoon showers are forecast for most places tomorrow. And the further outlook is looking ahead to the weekend to Sunday, some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Afternoon or evening showers elsewhere. Southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. Recapping our headlines tonight. Military Commander Rear Admiral William Inopoto says there is no cause for alarm over arms shipment. Land Transport Authority to outsource vehicle inspection services. And Health Ministry will retain retiring medical staff to ensure services aren't disrupted. On to this week's poll question. We are asking do you support the decision to extend the rent freeze? Visit our FPC website to take part. Well, you've been watching FPC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshini. Thank you for joining us. Good night.